One of the most important ideas in Judaism, in Jewish mysticism, is the idea of Ratzoi Veshuv. In fact, all of Judaism is based on the idea of Ratzoi Veshuv. What is Ratzoi Veshuv? It is yearning and returning. <laughs> you see, as the Alter Rebbe teaches us in today's Tanya, a human being is in a world, which is obvious. You exist in a universe. But what is a universe? Because before the universe existed, there was no universe. So whether you agree with science, the notion of Big Bang, obviously what's measurable now. But the point is that a universe is created. And what is it? It's a zone in which a independent soul or a soul that thinks that it's dependent, a soul body combination lives in a time-space dimension. Again, that is what a universe is. It's a place where a soul, an independent or a self-perceiving independent being, which is kind of a life force from God in a body, exists within a time-space dimension. Now, you will never, ever not be this. This is, in fact, one of the... It's not... One of the, it's the foundation of the foundation of Kabbalah. The foundational book of Kabbalah is Sefer Yitzira, written by Abraham. And it's built on the principle called Oshon, which is Oilam Shana Nefesh, time, space, soul. Because, think about it logically, if you didn't exist in a time, space dimension, you would be one with God. It's like a flame of fire or even a ray of light that comes from the sun. It only has a separate existence, the sun, when it's on earth. When that ray is in the sun, because if it shines its light down here, that light must be there as well. But you wouldn't call it ray of light because it's part of the sun. So we could only be independent existence within a time-space dimension. Now, the reason that's important is because it means our fundamental reality is not real. Yet, it is real enough to make it a perception. Like Einstein said, reality is illusion, but a very persistent one. So this is very, very critical. I said this in my class this morning. There are two things that are happening all the time. The first is the physical structure of reality, even of your body. And all of this, I don't want to go too lengthy and too deep, are basically repetitive cycles creating the same thing. So whether it's an atom that's coming in and out of existence, it creates the same atom. Whether it's your body that's every seven years, basically you have an entirely new body, many parts of you. The skin here wasn't here two weeks ago. The white of my eyes wasn't here two weeks ago. Yours too. So we're recycling, but we're recycling the same thing. It'd be nice if I got rid of some of those wrinkles. <laughs> but it's just the way it works is everything, whether it's life and death, it's just kind of perpetuating the same kind of body um, structure, every different plant, etc. But there's another story that's also happening, a deeper story. And that's not the physical story and that physical dimension that we perceive ourselves in, but rather the spiritual story. And the spiritual story is a beautiful story. It's an unbelievable story. Einstein said when we discover the truth of the old boss, which is how they called God in the olden days, I am sure it will both be beautiful and simple. And it's a very simple and a very beautiful story. And it's really almost infinite, so there's no way we can do justice to it. But just one concept that I'd like to bring out is that we are, as the Baal Shantav calls us, spiritual warriors. We are always growing. So just imagine something that's not cycling, but is actually, let's say, technology is a really good example. The new version of the iPhone is an entirely better upgrade. So we as human beings physically we can't get much better you know physically I could be a little healthier you know my house can be maybe a little bit more comfortable we physically we're not going to get much better it's just little upgrades maybe in comfort but spiritually I can get infinitely better whoever I am now tomorrow I can become an 
infinitely better human being. And if I can use myself as an example, God forbid to boast, but I'm just, it's a good example, is that as I became a more spiritual person, I can honestly say I am not the person that I was even two days ago. That person was not the same person two days before. And since I've been kind of on this trajectory, it's not simple to get to that place where you're really emotionally attuned and able to take the signs and the messages from God and grow. But 90% of what God is telling you is related to your self-growth. And let's say I've been on this path, let's say for five years, and let's say every two days I'm a new person. So that's an amazing thing. Every single two days I'll be a new person. You can be that too. So I just want to help you to start you off on the path. And that is with the teaching of the Baal Shem Tov. He says, everything you see, everything, any source, everything you hear, it's a lesson from God. You have to open up your mind to say, okay, what is God teaching me? And I'll conclude with something that changed my life was from 365 Meditations, Wisdom of the Rebbe. And the Rebbe says, if you, and it's actually quite well known in various different Jewish circles, though it's not that well known. If you don't know what to do, you can ask God. And the first thought is God's reply to you. <laughs>